So here's my question for you today. When you dive, do you think like a fish? We're going to be talking about it. Thanks for joining us, folks. Appreciate it. If you're new here, please consider reaching down there and hitting that subscribe button. And of course, it's some time if you would like to hit the like button or even leave a comment, we appreciate that too. So pretty strange question, right? Do you think like a fish when you dive? Now think about it. As humans, we deal every day with two specific things in our lives that control pretty much everything we do that don't exist necessarily underwater, and that's friction and gravity. So think about that sort of thing. When you walk, when I'm sitting in this chair, there's friction between the chair and my bottom of my shorts, and of course, something that's keeping me planted here on the ground is gravity. So when we're underwater, we basically don't have either. And a lot of times we talk about scuba diving when you're weightless, you're pretty much similar to an astronaut in space. When we think about that, we talk about things like waiting. And there's a lot of misnomers out there. And a lot of times people are actually trained to dive overweighted because they've been given the adage of 10% of your body weight. Now to give you some understanding, if I dove with 10% of my body weight, I would be diving with 20 pounds of weight in fresh water with a five mil uh, wetsuit on. But with an aluminum tank, I use 12. So the adage of 10% of your body weight is not really correct. It's a lot of times been discussed as a starting point and you work from there. But again, sometimes people make the mistake of it's being stated 10% of your body weight, end of statement, that's what they put in. And then when they go to dive, all of a sudden they're dealing with too much weight in the BCD. Now remember, in waiting and in buoyancy control, the three things that we're really dealing with is the amount of lead we put in our BCD, the amount of air we put in our BCD, of course, and of course, how much, how deep we're breathing. And of course, when we breathe normally, we're basically breathing in the middle 50% of our lung capacity. You've heard the adage, of course, when you deflate your BCD and you hold your breath, you should float at eye level. Now, that's, uh, again, a bit of a misnomer uh, because when we are preparing ourselves for a dive, in the beginning of the dive, yes, we're going to be slightly overweighted so that as we move through our dive and we use the air out of our tank and our tank gets lighter so we can stay at our safety stop, then that's where we're really looking to be properly weighted. Think about positioning of the weights. A lot of people are old school and they're used to using weight belts. Nobody's more old school than me. You know, integrated weight pockets, trim pockets are such a huge benefit. Now, some people like using the, the, the jacket style BCDs or the back inflates or the hybrids that we talk about on the channel, and that's fine and dandy. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple of uh, pictures and videos here. We're going to look at these and what we're going to be looking at is if you'll, uh, I'll, I'll put it up here so you can see it. What we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at some good positioning and we're going to be looking at some poor positioning. Now you're also going to see the way some people are trained. They're, they're trained in their open water dives and in their open water confined portion in a neutral buoyancy position so that they get used to that and they're not overweighted. Many other people are trained 
sorry to say it, but they're trained on their knees in the pool. So when they go to their open water experience for their open water dives, they tend to do everything on, your, on their knees. And, and I'm going to show that to you here. So look at this group of divers, and you'll see a bunch of them are on their knees, and some of them are actually going to move around like they're seahorses. And you're going to actually see some over here in this area down here. You'll see some that are actually standing up doing their, um, their, their scuba skills. So if you learn kneeling, you tend to dive in what we call, I call it a people position, all right? So, and yes, I know it's a person or a human position, but if I say, Think like a fish, not a people. People tend to remember it better if I say it corny like that. If you deflate completely, get all the air out of your BC, and you're properly weighted, then you should be dropping down like you're basically a wet leaf or a snowflake, not like a stone. Now, when you get to where you want to be, maybe three or four feet off the, the reef or whatever, and you move into the neutral buoyancy position, then you only have to add psh, psh, a couple of puffs of air to your BCD to become neutrally buoyant. And of course, if you're descending in a feet down position, now I know some of you are very experienced and you actually descend in what we term or some of us term the skydiver position or neutral buoyancy position and that's fine if you've got that kind of experience and that kind of control but if you're a fairly new diver feet down so that if your buddy has an equalizing issue and they need to stop and you need to stop all you have to do is kick gently to stop so Everything gets corrected, you quit kicking, and you both drop on down. So adding minimal amount of air to your BCD to become neutrally buoyant means that you've got good weighting, good am the proper amount of lead in your BC, and you're going to have good breath control so that as you're swimming along, if there was a little piece of reef that you wanted to swim up and over, just breathe a little deeper. You'll go up, swim up and over, and of course your body's going to follow your head and then down the other side. And it makes for, you know, a better uh, surface air consumption rate and your dives will last longer and hey, that's why you're down there. A lot of times, and even in, in the video that we, we're going to look at here and we've looked at, you'll see people when they're swimming along and, the, and they stop, they actually think they have to stand up into a people position. And that's not necessarily true. So if you just will stay in that neutral buoyancy position or fish position, stop, look at whatever you want to look at, take pictures, communicate with your dive buddy or whatever, then when you begin swimming again, you're still in that proper streamlined swimming position. If you move into the people position underwater and then you want to get swimming again, you've got to get repositioned. And as you're repositioned, many people will actually go from here. They'll begin swimming. They'll go up. Now they've got to curve over. And of course, any air that they had in their BCD when, it was, when they were neutrally buoyant, now they've stood up. All that air is now a big bubble at the top of their BCD. And now as they swim up, that big, big bubble's going to expand. And now they're dumping air. So now when they start back down, and as they move back down, now they've got to add air again. So it's multiple. Uh, unnecessarily uh, used air from what you could be breathing and to continue enjoying and lengthen your dive. So if you think about it, if you could increase your dive, maybe you're a 30 minute diver on an 80 cubic foot tank. If you could increase that by 15 minutes, and many people out there dive 45 minutes on an 80 cubic foot tank on say a 
a 55 or a 60 foot reef, that sort of thing. So if you could increase that from 30 to 45, and you did that on two dives, it's like getting a free dive. Think about that. I, again, it, sometimes it takes years for people to start thinking like a fish when they dive. And, uh, you know, we just encourage you to be good citizens of the underwater world. Don't just be tourists down there. I'm Bob Collins for Diver Supply. Thanks for being here. And as we always say, dive safe. Thanks a lot.